Classical physics, which includes the work of Sir Isaac Newton, deals with large visible objects and the forces acting upon them. Here, energy, whether kinetic or potential, is continuous and can change by any amount. This classical view reigned supreme until the end of the 19th century, when certain experimental results couldn't be explained by classical theories, especially at atomic and subatomic levels. The dawn of the 20th century saw the rise of a new theory, thanks initially to Max Planck. In 1900, trying to solve the black body radiation problem, an anomaly where classical physics predicted wildly incorrect results, Planck introduced the radical idea that energy is quantized. Instead of being continuous, energy could only change in discrete amounts or quanta. Planck's constant, a tiny number, was introduced as the proportionality constant between the energy of a photon and its frequency. This quantization was the foundation upon which all of quantum physics was built. While classical physics works excellently for everyday objects, Quantum physics reigns supreme at atomic and subatomic scales. But everyday objects are made of atoms, so, in a sense, everything is quantum. What we call classical energy is the scenario in which there are lots of particles with low energy. If the energy is quantum, it means the discreteness is noticeable. All the energy is packed into a single particle, like a bullet. In fact, this scenario is probably happening to you right now. On one hand, visible light from your screen is made of countless tiny particles called photons. Visible light has a modest frequency, so the energy each of these photons possesses is not a problem. However, you are also being bombarded by thousands of high-energy particles called muons that are ricocheted from the upper atmosphere by the constant rain of cosmic rays hitting Earth. Most of these tiny bullets pass right through you, but the ones that hit your atoms have enough energy to do damage. You may have heard this referred to as ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation is what comes from radioactive material, which is why it is considered dangerous, highly regulated, and handled only by professionals. This is the real quantum energy. The idea of superposition is central to quantum physics. It's often oversimplified as particles existing in multiple locations at once, but that's a bit like trying to explain a complex painting with a single brushstroke without paint on it. In truth, superposition refers to the mathematical representation of a quantum object's state. You can imagine a particular state as a spreadsheet filled with numbers that encode all the information required to predict the outcomes of experiments performed using that object. We often refer to objects as being in states, and that terminology is not limited to quantum physics. It might be said that you are in a state of happiness. But this implies that happiness is a real objective thing, or that states, in general, are objective things that objects transition through. But happiness is not objective. Happiness is really a shorthand concept for a bunch of expectations I should have for your actions, like that you will smile, laugh, and engage positively. Another abused two-letter word is. We might ask, what color is the apple? We definitely don't say, if white light shines on this apple, I will perceive what I have been told is the sensation of redness. No, we just say the apple is red, even though red isn't a real physical state. For our everyday experiences, this is unproblematic, though Google pink is not a color, and you'll see that it's not hard to find pedantry in just about anything. Quantum states are also not objective things that particles pass through. They are mathematical tools that help us understand and predict the behavior of quantum objects in various situations. There are basic states that predict intuitive things like, if the position of the object is measured, it will definitely be found here, or if the position of the object is measured, it will definitely be found there. But again, instead of writing out sentences that could quickly turn into paragraphs, we use a conceptual shorthand and say the object is in the state of being here, or simpler still, the object just is here or there. It's important to keep in mind that states are mathematical objects. The state summarized as object is here is actually a spreadsheet of numbers, as is the state summarized as object is there. Being made of numbers, we can easily imagine adding them together, giving us a new spreadsheet, a new state. This is a valid description of the object. It can be in this state.
What is an electron in superposition then? Information. Such a state provides information, heavily couched in the context of the rest of physics, that allows us to make accurate predictions about what will happen next. Now, if you have reductionist sympathies, you are likely open to the idea that everything, including the electron, the apple, and the state of happiness, is built up from billions upon billions of fundamental particles interacting according to the laws of physics. The universe is just a collection of particles arranged in various patterns, some of which happen to be very complex. But if I am just a collection of electrons and other particles, which can be in superposition states, why is it that I cannot? Why isn't superposition a part of our day-to-day -day lives? When a quantum object is isolated, it can maintain its superposition state and exhibit all that strange and counterintuitive goodness we like to ascribe to the quantum world. However, as soon as it interacts with its surroundings, such as air molecules, dust particles, or even photons of light, it becomes entangled with the environment, and the superposition quickly deteriorates. The more complex the object, the more interactions it has with its environment, and the faster the decoherence process unfolds. For example, a dust grain, floating in the dead of space, as far as possible from anything else, including starlight, would cease to be in a superposition of two locations, separated by the width of the grain in less than a second. This is the standard story of how the quantum world gives way to the classical world. The problem with this story is that it just waves more quantum jargon in your face. Entanglement? Who ordered that? One of the most confronting lessons quantum physics teaches us is that measurement requires some interaction with the object of investigation. It's the context of that measurement that defines the possible outcomes that provide us with information. For example, superpositions of here and there are not among the possible states that can be observed if we arrange to measure the position of the dust grain. There are measurements called interference experiments that do reveal superposition states, but they are not position measurements, and they would be extremely difficult to perform. As noted, such an experiment would at least require an environment more extreme than deep space. Perhaps we will one day perform one of these interference experiments with an object that can be seen with the naked eye. However, there would be absolutely no sense in asking what the superposition states looks like, because looking would necessitate a position measurement, which again does not have superposition states as its possible outcomes. The only thing such an experiment would look like is data shown to you on a screen, just more information. If the interactions between things and a dust grain did not provide information about its location, the superposition state would be maintained. However, the entire concept of location would also be irrelevant in such a situation. It's the proliferation of location information that gives a here and there superposition state meaning and why it features in the theory at all. In effect, our everyday world is a collection of particles with locations because they all mutually encode position information of each other. If it were otherwise, we would not exist. Superposition is not miraculous. It's the simple, classical here and there states that provide all the beauty and complexity of our experience. Quantum physics is really a theory about isolation, and it doesn't apply to you, nor would you want it to.